All right, good afternoon. Why we're here is for the current crime concerns that we have, and this is for me to give you the opportunity to have an understanding of what our summer plan as it relates to violent crimes and community policing and our youth engagement will be uh, throughout the summer. Uh, as you know, every summer we begin to see some increases in crime in certain areas, and that's due to the number of the schools being out, the number of social activities we have throughout our city. Uh, the Atlanta Police Department will engage in several initiatives to combat anticipated rise in violent crimes during our summer month, beginning Friday, June 4th, through Saturday, August 28th. Uh, in addition to crime fighting efforts, separate initiatives to positively engage our community and our youth will be implemented. We've seen an uptick in crime throughout our city of Atlanta, and I want to reassure the citizens of the Atlanta uh, that the Atlanta Police Department will remain vigilant throughout this entire summer and going forward. So our, our violent crime reduction plan, what does that look like? Uh, APD will, uh, and our Homeland Security will work very closely with ATF. Uh, one of the things that we continue to see is the number of handguns that we find in, in, in a number of our youth, and as well as the uh, people who just should not have guns in their, in their hand. Uh, one, we believe that we have to intercept that. We have to do a better job of re uh, being able to find out where these guns are coming from and uh, cut that avenue off. Uh, restructuring our police department. I've talked about us centralizing our investigation. I believe that centralizing our police investigation unit uh, division, uh, as you were, will give us the ability to have greater uh, accessibility to our investigators, to streamline their processes, giving us more resources and units that I think needs to be beefed up to include our gun, alcohol, our gun assault uh, unit. Uh, that will give them the ability to, uh, one, having more people in that unit uh, as, and investigate more cases more efficiently, more effectively, and to be able to get people off of the street prior to them committing some more egregious type incidents. Uh, our license and permits unit. Our license and permits unit will be beefed up as well over the summer. One of the things that we've been able to recognize is there are a number of locations operating as restaurants, uh, but the reality is they are, this give them an ability to operate throughout the night uh, and given a uh, operating like very much like a club. Uh, so what this will give us the ability to do is put additional resources out to uh, in, investigate and inspect these locations. Additionally, we were able to train over 50 of our police officers to help uh, supplement this unit, which will be operating both on a day shift and an evening shift and later into the hours. So giving us a greater span to address some of the concerns that we are getting from these locations. Conducting a job compliance check. Right now, uh, we have a lot of police officers that work extra jobs in some of our downtown spaces as well as in our nightlife. When we're doing this, this will give us a false multiplier of not just inspecting our police officers to ensure that they're adhering to our rules and policies, but it also give us the ability to go and have a conversation with these uh, uh, other uh, locations that may have some, a nightlife as well. Uh, additionally, something that we've not done before is evaluate the security measures that many of these night locations may have. We know that some operate with uh, metal detectors, security. One of the things that we think we could do better is have, uh, having dialogue with them where we see that their security initiatives may be uh, to par, giving them ideas on how they could better uh, help themselves as well as help us. Our code enforcement section. Uh, code enforcement will have the responsibility of responding immediately to a location uh, reactively if they if an incident happens at a location that we, that's not previously on our radar. We want to make sure reactively that we're doing everything so to minimize a repeat incident at those locations. Now, the code enforcement 
generally works proactive by going out uh, based on complaints uh, and search and, and complaints and concerns that we get from our, our civic leaders and community leaders. But this reactive piece will be the new part that when a incident may happen, uh, they are responding as well. Utilizing overtime in our video integration center. Uh, we utilize our video integration center as a key component to what we do, backing up our police officers, giving us the ability to be in spaces and see, issue, see incidences that our, our police officer may not be at that location to address. Uh, and so we're having more people in our video inter integration center will give us the ability to put more eyes uh, out on, on throughout our city and give us the ability to respond better. Conduct, conducting weekly traffic enforcement details. Again, one of the things, one of our strongest partners is Georgia State Patrol and Fulton County Sheriff Office. Working in collaboratively with them, making sure that we have mul mul uh, force multipliers, uh, not just for street racing in, in our downtown space, but in um, spreading that out throughout our cities where we are seeing uh, upticks and increases in issues and crime throughout our city. Partnering with our state and uh, local partners, the district attorney's office, our Fulton County Sheriff's Office to disrupt gang violence. I think that this will be a significant game changer going into what we are seeing in the summer. Uh, because one of the things that we do know is gangs in the city of Atlanta is, really have their tentacles in every aspect of every kind of crime that you can imagine. So if we are t attacking them aggressively uh, and more with more partnership and being more collaborative, I think that this will really change the trajectory of what we are seeing. Uh, and then multiplying this with uh, overlaying this, I'm sorry, overlaying this with what we're seeing with uh, our Phoenix, uh, Operation Phoenix with our federal partners. Operation Phoenix goes after our most violent offenders. They may not be in a gang, but they're still a violent offender. This uh, overlaying with what we're seeing with the uh, gang task force, I think will really pay significant dividends going into the summer as well. We'll be implementing our Shot Spotter, uh, a pilot program with Shot Spotter this summer as well. Uh, this will give us the ability to address gun violence uh, that we have throughout our city. We had Shot Spotter previously. It didn't give us the dividends that we thought. We have had conversation with St Shot Spotter, retooled it, uh, worked with our strategies and special projects, worked with the mayor's office to make sure that we can now uh, re tool what we are doing in that shot spotter space. And so we'll evaluate that, but we'll be evaluating it throughout the summer where we are seeing increases in our violent crime. Uh, additionally, one of the things that we recognize is we want to be able to put more police officers out on the street. So we are adjusting our administrative personnel as well, where they will be deployed out in some of these uh, areas as well to supplement the day-to-day -day patrols that you're seeing. Uh, I, one of the council members asked, will we be deploying the command level uh, to be in the day-to-day -day, uh, crime fighting? Uh, and as I stated to her, we in the command are talking crime every single day. Uh, but what you will see, as you see me in this blue uniform and most of the command in blue uniform, that gives us the ability to go out in these streets, talk to the men and women that are on the front line, really give them our message, see exactly what their concerns are firsthand. That way we can come back and immediately address the issues that they are bringing forth. Um, so uh, additionally, we generally go through our uh, weekends with one commander, one on the day, one on the evening, who generally gives us the ability to, uh, so that the command staff that generally works uh, throughout the week have the ability to be off, uh, we are increasing both of those by two. So we're doing everything that we possibly can to expand the, the level, uh, our response to violent crime. But cr violent crime cannot be fought with just police alone. Additionally, what we have to be able to do is increase our ability through community policing, expanding our video production with the public affairs and cops to create neighborhood-specific webinars 
and to help in crime, help communities fight crime themselves. Increase the number of pop-up community uh, um, presence with our police recruiting. Uh, I, one of the things that we recognize as well is we still have to backfill some of the vacancies that we have. We're pushing an aggressive agenda with the mayor's office and the Atlanta Police Foundation to make sure that we continue to backfill the spaces that we have uh, to reach the goal of 250 as the mayor has required upon us. And then encourage uh, citizens to create a neighborhood watch programs. Uh, it was just spoke of, uh, I want to say, in the city of Brookhaven where neighbors uh, who were able to call about an incident that was about to happen. We need more of that. Uh, when neighbors, uh, because police officers cannot be everywhere. We don't have a camera on every corner. So to expand what we are able to do, and as I've always, you'll always hear me say, public safety goes beyond the police department, goes beyond law enforcement. It takes all of us to be partners in public safety. So um, we'll, we'll be working with communities to increase their neighborhood watch program. Our youth engagement. Uh, we're partnering with the Mayor's Office of Youth Engagement, the Atlanta Public School, Fulton County Sheriff, and, uh, and Fulton County Police Department to address some of the issues that we're seeing around these water sales. Uh, we are rolling out a very robust plan as it relates to uh, countering that. Uh, I had a meeting this morning and was told that in certain areas it is quite effective, uh, and we're looking to continue to push that throughout our city. Each zone will be uh, dedicating one officer seven days a week to our youth engagement initiative and our youth entrepreneur program. Officers will conduct parent, guardian, and youth uh, provide information to our youth entrepreneurs. Inf I'm sorry, youth entrepreneur program and additional resources available to them. Our hope team will continue to go out and work in some of the problematic areas that we continue to find and have a homelessness in our community. And we're partner with the Fulton County Juvenile and Probation to allow kids to transition into our PAL and our I Promise Centers. I was asked just earlier today how important I thought that those resources were to the police department, and they are vital. Uh, one of the things that we saw, we saw over the last summer and we have seen, continued to see is when our youth are, don't have anything to do when they are not in school full time, when they don't have the resources available to them to do something else, they find something else to do. And it's, they tend to either be the perpetrators of something or the victims of some crimes. Um, and then lastly, we plan to increase, I'm sorry, uh, our video integration unit will monitor shopping centers and juvenile t that ten juveniles tend to congregate in. We, we continue to recognize that there are issues around Lenox Square and Camp Creek Marketplace and Atlantic Station. We have to continue to be very vigilant around those locations to make sure that uh, those areas don't get out of, out of hand. So overall, we plan to enhance safety and security at our nightclubs and our businesses employing extra job police officers. A 50 reduction in firearm related assaults at nightclubs and business employing extra job police officers. Increased the number of cases presented to the Operation Phoenix by 5% compared to the previous three months. And then lastly, increased the number of spot checks to establishment license that sells alcohol by 5% previous to uh, the past three months. Uh, that's us rolling out our summer plan uh, and I'll take specific and direct questions if you have any. Can you speak to the 827 uh, uh, stolen guns out of vehicles, um, you know, in terms of, you know, I guess what you recommend and what you all are doing to advise people about this issue? Absolutely. Uh, I can tell you one of the things that we continue to see is uh, crimes generally are progressive. Uh, when, and what people tend to do uh, with many of our juveniles and cr criminals that recognize that in the state of Georgia, you have the right to have a gun. And so there's a proliferation of weaponry in our city. And people tend to put guns in their car and fail to secure them. These kids are going out specifically looking for guns in these cars. We're asking citizens to be more vigilant and more attentive to their weapons. 
if you just absolutely have to put a gun inside your car that you secure that in your vehicle with either a gun safe or put it in the trunk and lock it up with a cable. We need, that's one of the uh, biggest ways the citizens can help us is by not leaving guns inside, the vi inside their vehicles. Going off of that, Chief, I know that the increase is up to about just over 800, and we saw that at the end of 2019 and 2020 by the end of the year. So it is a significant increase. Um, do you believe there is any connection to this increase in crimes? I know there's not specific data on it, but what's your opinion? I think that, again, it, it, you have to look at this thing in its totality. On, there are so many other things that affect what we're seeing around crime, jobs, uh, people being out of work, people not having the resources that they generally or, or the outlets that they generally would have the ability to go and have them. Uh, and that to, that's to include churches. And again, I talk about our Boys and Girls Club, our At Promise, because so many entities are still under COVID restrictions, so it limit the number of people that are coming in there. And so when people, uh, and then I believe, uh, you know, I just heard a psychologist say just recently that people are just short-tempered, and that's much of one of the gun violence that we're seeing, is that people are just failing to have normal conflict resolution skills. Uh, so there's a, a, a merit of reasons that we're seeing it, uh, but as things begin to open up, uh, I think, I would hope that these numbers and the strategies that we're putting in place, we start to see those numbers go down. And in certain categories, uh, we are. Chief, obviously, you and your department are relying on this plan as a whole to reduce crime, but if you had to pinpoint one or two of these topics that you touched on that are in your plan, which of, I mean, which one or two would you say you're hoping will reduce or will result in the best result or produce the best result? Absolutely. Uh, I think the first one will be that we continue to rely upon our partnerships with our partnering agencies. That's both at the, at the federal and state level as well as our local level. That gives us a force multiplier to get, continue to go out into the streets, address the issues and the concerns that we're seeing. Secondly, I do truly believe that uh, us centralizing many of our resources inside the police department will give us the ability to uh, do cleanup on the back end, resolving some of these crimes. And then lastly, and I'm sorry I'm, I left this out of my, out of my talking points, uh, our repeat offender program. Uh, repeat offenders tend to be a continued problem in, in the city. Uh, and so we'll be reestablishing that one as well. And what that will allow us to do is to really uh, go after these repeat offenders who fail to uh, do the right thing when they get, after they've been adjudicated. This will give us the ability to have a better product with the DA and the courts and get them off of the street. Ron, it's very frustrating. One of the things that we continue to see uh, our office, and that's very, it, it's so frustrating that we had a conversation just this morning as we were talking about our COVID, going through our COVID report, and we talked about a kid that we have been tracking for three years. Uh, and that's problematic when you're arresting someone, be a juvenile or an adult, and they're back out in the same location the next day. That is a problem. It, it becomes... Uh, it, it, it goes at the morale of the officer as well. I believe, I believe that us being more aggressive with our repeat offender, uh, that this will help us not just internally but externally as well. There's obviously a misconception out there, but if you could kind of nail it, COVID's obviously been a tough year for police departments across the country. You guys have seen a crime spike. What are we missing here? What don't we understand as a public in terms of like what you guys are dealing with 24-7 when it comes to crime? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, what we, the police department, most law enforcement agency has been the constant through COVID. Uh, and not only were they the constant, they had to be, they had to continue to be the constant even under civil unrest, even when they were the, when we were the targets of the, the uh, anger of, of many citizens, 
we had to stay steady. Uh, even though police officers were going through some of the same issues with family members coming under, uh, falling to COVID, uh, where their kids were frustrated by not going to school, um, and then them working, having to work long hours. And then we still had to come out and deal with the citizens uh, who just wanted general protection. So it was a lot going on with, with the profession as a whole. They remain constant. And then other, other institutions that we truly rely upon to help us in this space, I mean, due to COVID, had to reduce their, their, their ability to have outreach. Uh, and so that falls on us. And that's, we had more added to us during COVID, um, but we're still managing through it. I believe that the summer plan that we're rolling out is very aggressive and that it will really target some of the areas that we are seeing um, issues. This plan goes specific after violent crime. Uh, it goes specifically at the nightclubs that we're continuing to have problems. It goes at the quality of life issues that the community continue to bring us concern with. So it is specific to the things that we are seeing as well as the area that we anticipate will increase. That's what this plan is for. Uh, it's not being carried out just by Atlanta police. Again, we are we are relying heavily on our partners who are you know uh, generally with us every day. I talk to all of our counterparts quite often, and so I'm confident that we'll be able we'll be in a better space this summer than we were last summer. Absolutely. So when we have engagement with any youth, uh, one of the first things that we are trying to do is to find a place for them, to give them resources, to get off of the street, to get out of the trouble that they may be in. The At Promise Center and our PAL centers are the first places we go. The At Promise Centers give them much more wraparound services, not just for that, for that child, but for that child's family. And so we're always trying to prevent issues before they get uh, further down the line. The At Promise Center is, is, has uh, reports that they have a 6% re, uh, recidivism rate. That's significant. And if we can continue to push kids in that direction, I think it'll be quite helpful for us. Thank you. 